Hello, and welcome to today's live reading of Messenger and M.M. Romeo and Juliet Retelling, written by A.L. Morrow, presented by Itsy Bitsy Book Bits. Cyrus. As, Cyrus, as far as Cyrus could tell, no one had seen Devlin in days. Not that any of the demons he'd talked to had been particularly forthcoming, of course. The male with a shaved head and bulging arms standing behind the cash register at one of the bodegas on Sheol Street was no exception. Buy something or get out, he said gruffly when Cyrus asked if he'd seen Dev. For emphasis, the demon curled one of his meaty hands into a fist and thumped it on the counter. Cyrus sighed and glanced around the cramped shop. There was a wall of refrigerated cases stocked with beverages. A few shelves were lined with boxed food mixes, hygiene products, and batteries. And closer to the register sat a display of pre-made snacks and sandwiches. The place was dingy and uninspiring, and the air conditioner made a racket, barely managing to keep away the desert heat. But if Cyrus wanted answers, he'd have to play along with the demon proprietor's game. Fine. Quickly, Cyrus snatched at a sand sandwich and tossed it on the counter without bothering to read what kind it was. The demon grunted, then jabbed at the buttons on the register, while Cyrus pulled his wallet from his back pocket. The total flickered on the screen in, a broken, in broken neon green letters, three times the amount advertised on the little white sticker stuck to the side of the plastic packaging. Cyrus raised his brows. Seriously? The price is what I say it is, Angel. The demon's eyes flashed like fire, amber flames daring Cyrus to argue. But Cyrus didn't take the bait. He wasn't here to make trouble, especially since Sheol Street, the main road in rundown Nocturna, still hadn't recovered from the last fight between Celestials and demons. The broken glass, piles of trash, and scorch marks on the buildings outside were proof of that. No, Cyrus only wanted to find Devlin. Finding Dev meant finding Jace, and finding Jace meant peace of mind. It also meant hope. So he tossed the cash on the counter, tucked his wallet away again, and reached for the sandwich. Transaction complete. He was officially a paying customer. Now, about Dev. He's a forger, used to work at Perdition Market. The demon snorted now, his wide nostrils flaring. Never heard of him. Of course, Cyrus should have figured the demon would say that, whether or not it was the truth. Are you sure? He's about this tall. Cyrus lifted his hand as though an invisible person was standing at shoulder height before, beside him. He has dark hair and a scar down the side of his face. To be honest, Cyrus had never actually met Devlin in person. He'd only heard about him from Jace and Astra, but he'd been able to piece together this much about his appearance from the demons who had likely inadvertently let some information about Devlin slip. The bodega's proprietor, however, was not so careless. I already told you I don't know shit. The male formed a fist with his other hand, and it joined the first on the countertop. So unless you want to get a cola to go with that sandwich, I suggest you move on. Cyrus let out a long, slow sigh. He absentmindedly squeezed the sandwich in his hand, denting the side of its plastic container. No, I'm good. No cola for me. Thanks. He said thanks, but the tone sounded more like, fuck you. The proprietor glowered, but before he could reach across the counter to grab at his shirt or swing at his face, Cyrus was out of reach. He pushed against the glass door and slipped out onto the street. Another dead end, just like the laundromat and the bar had been. Demons protected their own, it seemed, especially when it came to giving up information to a stranger. And most especially when that stranger might just be their public enemy number one, a messenger. The hostility between messengers and demons was not new nor was it unfounded. It had been built over time, over thousands of years, actually, since the Watcher-class Celestials who'd been sent to the mortal realm decided to take their orders to protect humans, literally. As their name implied, they watched over them, but eventually watching turned to loving, and that loving resulted in the birth of demons. Half-human, half-celestial, a dark integration of both worlds, conceived from disobedience and the embodiment of it. As the demons' numbers grew, so did the destruction they caused. Messengers had been trying to cull and contain them ever since. It was an action watchers disapproved of. The demons were, after all, their children. The groups had been on the verge of war for decades. Messengers versus the watchers and demons. Tensions had worsened, too, since the messengers corralled them 
all into Las Vegas, Sin City. The perfect place to hide a population of creatures known for defiance and debauchery. But Cyrus wasn't an idiot. He knew better than to advertise his status as a messenger. It wasn't like he strutted through the ruins of Shoal Street in his bronze-coated armor. His fluffy white wings stretched out as wide as the horizon. That was a good way to get attacked, his wings hacked off, or worse. Still, even without his telltale white wings unfurled, he was easy to identify as a celestial. The soft, starry glow of his skin, ethereal good looks, and hint of an accent gave him away. The demons didn't know Cyrus was different, that he meant them no harm. You're the one looking for Deb, right? The voice startled Cyrus, not because it was harsh and suspicious like the others he'd gotten used to hearing around here lately, but because it was soft. Soft and unsteady. Hesitant. He turned quickly. Picking through a heap of trash by an overflowing dumpster was a child, nine years old, maybe ten. Cyrus stepped closer. He'd been so distracted he hadn't even noticed the kid before. The boy was so submerged in the pile of cardboard, pallets, and food scraps that he almost blended in with them, and he was dirty, the kind of filthy that couldn't simply be washed off with a bath. He was the kind of unclean that sat in the soul that came from being forgotten, from neglect. The kid turned his wide eyes up at Cyrus, and they were a peculiar brownish red, but it was the pair of black stubby horns sticking out between the tangles of his dark hair that gave him away. He was a demon. Maybe Cyrus had been wrong about the species distrusting him after all. Yeah, Cyrus told the kid, that's right. Dev knows where a friend of mine is. I just want to make sure he's okay. Nodding, the boy stepped out from behind the pile of trash. I know someplace you might find him. He came to a halt as soon as he moved out of the dumpster's shadow. The sun brightened his face, somehow making him seem even paler and scrawnier than he had a moment ago. For a second, he gaped at Cyrus as if overwhelmed by his height, strength, and golden hair. Then his eyes locked on the sandwich still clutched in Cyrus's hand. He fell silent and licked his lips with unmistakable longing. He was hungry. Cyrus cringed. When was the last time someone had fed this poor kid? Was that what he was searching for in the trash? Something to eat? The half-eaten brown-flushed apple he noticed in the boy's hand told him that was it. Which gave Cyrus an idea. I was about to have lunch. Want to share? He nodded toward the sandwich. The boy's eyes widened and he stepped back as if startled. Shit, he hadn't meant to scare the kid or was it pride that kept him from accepting? There was one way to find out. Cyrus sat down on a discarded shipping crate near the dumpster. If he'd been hungry, the smell of the rotting refuse in the Las Vegas heat would have been enough to make him lose his appetite. Silently, he peeled back the seal and opened the plastic container in his hand. As he took out half of the sandwich, he saw the shadow shift on the sidewalk in front of him. The boy was watching him. Then he moved closer. Here, take it. Cyrus held out the portion of the sandwich. It was nothing special, white bread, ham, and cheese. The lettuce was a little wilted, and the tomato had seen better days, but the kid didn't seem to care. He stared at it like it was a proper three-course meal. The withered apple fell to the pavement with a thump. The demon slid onto the edge of the crate beside Cyrus and accepted the offering. What's your name? The kid wasted no time devouring his food. By the time Cyrus finished the question, he had most of the sandwich in his mouth. Ransom, he mumbled as he chewed. Cyrus grinned, his heart warming at the pure joy on Ransom's face as he ate. Nice to meet you, Ransom. The boy squinted up at him for a second, his bottom lip falling open with confusion. Was it possible no one had ever spared a kind word for him before? A crumb landed on Ransom's t-shirt, interrupting the awkwardness of the moment. The boy quickly picked up the fallen piece and ate that, too. Cyrus cleared his throat. You know where I might find Devlin, then? He had it meant to make the sandwich part of the transaction, to hold it hostage for information. He'd have given the kid the food whether or not he knew anything about Devlin's whereabouts. But there was no sense in ignoring the fact that the kid knew Dev, not when both of them could benefit from their chance meeting. Ransom hesitated. He looked over his shoulder as though someone might be listening from the shadows of the alley behind him. He crammed the remaining bit of the sandwich into his mouth hurriedly. Then he lifted a finger and pointed across the street to a building in far better condition than any of the others on Shoal Street. There, her club. The red neon lights of the sign above the door weren't on. It was too early in the day for that. The sun too bright, but the demon brothel was unmistakable anyway. As recognizable as it was infamous, the most popular place on the street, and because of its popularity, 
Her club was one of the few buildings not covered in graffiti. The demons might not have respected much, but they seemed to hold one timeless truth in high regard, sex sells. And Cyrus had to hand it to them. But what struck him even more was Ransom him himself. Cyrus didn't know much about parenting. He could count on one hand the number of times he'd held an infant, but he understood enough to realize a child Ransom's age shouldn't be familiar with Kerr Club. You're sure, he asked the boy. I've seen Dev go in before. Cyrus, Cyrus brushed the back of his neck with his fingers, staunching the prickle of discomfort that raised the hairs there. Part of him wanted to sweep Ransom away from here, give him a warm bath and fresh clothes, or and surround him with toys, a bicycle, building blocks, or even those gaming systems he'd heard were popular with the human kids. Anything to keep him as young as he was and as innocent as he should have been. The soggy sandwich in his hand seemed like an even more pathetic offering now. When was the last time you noticed him there? Pathetic or not, Ransom's eyes drifted toward the remaining half of the sandwich still in Cyrus's hand. He licked his bottom lips and looked up at the messenger beside him, a silent plea on the tip of his tongue. Without a word, Cyrus handed over the rest of the sandwich. Last week, I think, the kid had shed the plastic container and started in on the rest of his meal. So, before the perdition riots? Perdition riots. That was what the reporters on the news were calling the latest battle among the Celestials and the demons. More like perdition slaughter, Cyrus thought. But he supposed the former was more polite, even if it were a wild understatement. He lost his cousin, Eris, in the riots, but Jace had lost so much more. His friend Cassian, a demon, along with the right to stay in Las Vegas. Ransom nodded, and Cyrus sighed. The thought of Devlin, a demon, going into a brothel wasn't startling at all. He was no closer to finding that Jace than he had been a few minutes before. Is that bad? There was so much hope in the poor kid's eyes that Cyrus didn't have the heart to tell him the truth, that he was back to the drawing board, so Cyrus forced himself to grin. Not at all. You were a big help. He reached over to ruffle Ransom's hair affectionately. Thank you. The demon beamed like a little star right there here beside him, but his happiness didn't last for long. Over the boy's shoulder, Cyrus noticed a pair of cops leaning against a car across the street. They stood together with matching fast food coffee cups, swapping jokes while they ignored the scavengers, spray painters, and apparently lost children wandering Shoal Street on their watch. Assholes. That was what Jace would have called them, and Cyrus would have to agree. Then the radio clipped to the belt of the policeman closest to them beeped. As he reached for it, his eyes locked on Cyrus, then on Ransom. The laughter on his face died immediately. The dimples in his rounded cheeks smoothed as he frowned and he tapped his partner, a taller man with thick reddish hair on the arm. Redhead followed dimples' stare. He stood straighter, sobering. Cyrus couldn't hear their words, but their reactions said enough. Dimples mother muttered something into the radio, clipped it back on his belt, and then the pair were moving, crossing the street, coming toward them. The desert air felt stifling all over again, and Cyrus could have sworn his heart dropped to the bottom of his stomach. These cops might be human and no match for his celestial powers, but they were far from harmless. They had the backing of the messenger army here in Vegas. With one quick call, the skies over Shoal Street would be a flurry of white wings and silver toned swords. Maybe they'd already called for messenger backup. Come on, Ransom. Let's get out of the sun, all right? Cyrus stood and nudged the child on the shoulder, urging him to stand. The boy looked up and panic registered in his eyes, but it was too late. Dimples hovered over Ransom like a storm cloud glaring. Where'd you get the sandwich, demon? Ransom swallowed the bite in his mouth and looked up at the cop, helpless. He, he gave it to me. He glanced desperately at Cyrus. It's true, Cyrus began to explain. I think you stole it, Redhead interrupted, ignoring Cyrus completely. He spoke loudly as though the volume of his voice could drown out the truth. Ransom's eyes filled with tears. I didn't, I promise. Dimples reached out and grabbed the boy's skinny arm, pinching hard as he yanked him off the crate they'd been sitting on. The half-eaten remains of the sandwich fell to the pavement. You're lying little shit like all of your kind. Hey, there's no need for any of this, Cyrus raised his voice now. If Redhead could do it, so could he. I bought the sandwich and gave it to him. It's that simple. Stay out of this, angel. Redhead snapped. The next few seconds passed by so quickly that Cyrus could hardly make sense of everything as it happened. Let me go, tears dribbled down Ransom's pale, dirt-smeared cheeks as Dimples ripped a pair of bronze handcuffs from a carabiner attached to his belt. The boy tried to squirm away, but Dimples only gripped him harder. 
The two thrashed against each other as Dimples tried to lower the restraints onto the boy's wrist. Hold still, you little bastard. Ransom's eyes blazed a fiery red. The cuffs snapped closed on themselves as they hovered above his wrist. Then they flew from Dimples' grasp as if torn away by some invisible hand and smashed against the graffitied side of the building beside him. Demon magic. Celestials had certain powers born of the stars. They harnessed the energy of the cosmos that ran through their veins to form orbs of destructive energy. Demons had their own abilities. They were manipulative able to bend objects and humans to their will. Cyrus had never seen demon magic up close like this before. He hadn't realized children were capable of using their gifts, but that was exactly what Ransom had done. As the handcuffs clattered to the pavement, Dimples let out a grunt of fury. He reached for the baton dangling from his hip and raised it high. Ransom screamed, cowering in the shadow of the weapon as he waited to feel its impact. But Cyrus was faster than any human. Lunging between the boy and the cop, he spread his ivory wings. The fibers of his shirt parted to make way for the gold-tipped feathers as they emerged from between his shoulder blades. He swept the baton from Dimples' grasp as the tip of the wing, with the tip of a wing as he leapt upward. Run, Ransom, run, he shouted.